Kommen wir in einem anderen Kontext zusammen, Freund. Kommt schon. Sehr gut, wunderbar. Freund, haben wir haben uns ja, hier schon mal im Rahmen der Civil Digital Marketing <lacht> Experience Arena begrüßt. Jetzt begrüßen wir uns noch mal im Rahmen der Enterprise Digital Arena. So viel Zeit muss sein. Ähm, ist ja alles verwandt, also genau. kann ja funktionieren. Ne? Genau, aber wir müssen uns auch diesem Publikum kurz Sven Prüser vorstellen. Sven Prüser ja. ist äh, Professor an der ATW Berlin, beschäftigt sich mit dem Thema Digitalisierung, also Internetökonomie im weitesten Sinne. Und wie wandeln sich Unternehmen, wie sollten sie sich wandeln, um mithalten zu können? Genau. Und dankenswerterweise übernimmst du hier immer Teile meiner Moderation <lacht> und äh, hast jetzt einen spannenden Gast und ihr wechselt jetzt, glaube ich, aufs Englische und ich lasse euch genau, mal auf der Genau, wir Bühne. wechseln jetzt die Sprache. May I introduce to you Mr. Diane Hinchcliffe. He is one of the evangelists of digitalization and I don't want to talk longer. Please, the stage is yours. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Professor. So, I wanted to, this is my second time, my second opportunity to speak in front of you, and I wanted to uh, give a tour of what, what I think is uh, taking place uh, in the next steps of our journey towards digitization, both digital technology and social, the human component. So, uh, I want to talk about the near future of the digital and social enterprise, and then my good friend here will, will challenge my assertions, and, and maybe we can take some questions from you as well. Uh, I'm Chief Strategy Officer of Seven Summits. Uh, we design digital strategies and online communities for the world's largest organizations. Uh, and I write for ZDNet, where you may have seen some of these ideas. So what's next? What should your organization begin planning for? Uh, to take advantage of technology, it usually takes a year, 18 months, two years to experiment with, figure out how it applies to your business and then deploy it. So that's going to be the challenge. Uh, but most organizations are still grappling with the digital and social basics. Um, and so we have to prepare for that fast arriving future. So what I'm hoping I'll answer for you today is what emerging technologies should you be looking at that are likely to have significant impact? Uh, why you should evaluate those trends? And what are the key takeaways, actions, and maybe some early preparation you can do? Because uh, tomorrow is coming quickly, uh, the next generation of technology will be very different from today. So I'm going to make the proposition to you that, that th th things like this are just an interim step. The user experience is about to undergo its greatest change ever. There's a reason that Mark Zuckerberg, uh, the founder of Facebook, is investing in Oculus Rift and augmented reality, saying that is the future of social, for example. So we're going to have to learn all new platforms and technologies, think about even more interesting and powerful ways to engage. Uh, how do we tap into new forms of value creation? Because if we're doing this and we're not creating value for our businesses and our customers, then why are we doing it? And how do we do this sustainably as, as technology uh, speeds up? So I mentioned in my keynote two days ago, we live in exponential times. Tech changes happening faster and faster because the tech industry gets bigger and we can reuse so many of those ideas. And our organizations have to climb the curve. And the ones that can't, well, they don't survive. Uh, we've seen the data that uh, the average S&P 500 organization now only lasts about 13 years. Uh, we've seen industry leadership, the volatil volatility has risen sharply uh, with the primary cause being lack of technology adaptation, right? So. We look at the Fortune 500, 80% uh, of them that were around in the year 2000 are not around any longer. So what technology should you have already been looking at today? Maybe that's a good place to start. I know we can't go through this whole chart, but every year I, I take a look at what should you be not, it should be in experimentation, in your labs, you should be looking at already, right? So, you know, uh, commercial public cloud, team collaboration, cybersecurity should be at the top of your list machine learning, social business, things like 3D printing if you make physical goods, uh, machine to machine interfaces, uh, uh, wearable IT, uh, containers, which is an IT topic that is white hot right now, allow you to virtualize everything that you're doing inside your organization. These are some of the things you should already be doing to differentiate about from what's coming next. So what will all these technologies do to our organizations? I've made the case that the borders of our organizations are becoming less distinct, that we're becoming much more self-organized, community-centric organizations with open collaboration that are much less hierarchical. That's the natural outcome of pervasive communications and collaborations technology, on-demand 
uh, workforces uh, are, are, are an important part of our future economies. The, the sharing economy, things like Uber and Airbnb, will be as much as a quarter of the global economy in just four years. Um, that's, th those are amazing stories. Those are new business models that require new ways of thinking about our supply chain and are directly enabled by technologies, right? So these are some of the things that we have to take into account. And some of these new, new technologies, I don't find many people tracking. Things like blockchain. How many of you have heard about blockchain? So a few of you, that's not bad. That's the technology underlying Bitcoin. And it's truly revolutionary, but it is completely separate from it. It can be used by anything. And most financial institutions, including many of the leading German banks, are looking at blockchain. It's a it's an open collaborative ledger system. Everyone has a complete and total copy of the ledger, so it cannot be forged. All transactions are open and transparent, so it cannot be in any fraud. And everything is digitally signed, so it cannot be tampered with. Uh, and since everyone has an entire copy of the blockchain, and it is getting big, right? It's well over 100 gigabytes now. Uh, it's, it's forming the, the basis for uh, getting rid of things like money laundering and other, uh, other advances. It, it's, it is truly revolutionary, and we'll see that. Um, mind machine interfaces, digital agents. You know, the Amazon Echo is showing that we're going to have voice control of everything in our businesses in the, next, in the next year or two, right, with the Internet of Things coming. Augmented reality, that's, that's the Samsung Gear VR. I have it. It's an amazing device, but it's, it's still in its very early days. It allows you to in instantly enter a completely immersive virtual world. Uh, new platforms, social changing, the Salesforce Community Cloud has gone from not having existed to being one of the top three social platforms and probably going to be the top social platform pretty soon. Payments are changing, mobile payments, social payments. Uh, vendors like, uh, companies like Venmo, uh, Square are making anyone be able to process currency uh, wherever they stand, anywhere in the world. I use it all the time. So we're seeing this unleashing, creating unleashing value creation in all new ways. Um, that, that successful next generation digital organizations will be much more decentralized, much more centered around what happens on the network, more asynchronous, meaning not, not lock step in what they do highly scalable. We've seen that the, uh, I've seen the curves, uh, the charts on the slides the last uh, three days showing that each new technology is adopted faster than before. It took 75 years for the automobile and the telephone uh, uh, to get full adoption, whereas the tablet can do it in just over a year. And the new technologies are doing it in under a year, getting widespread adoption by the average person. So this requires high scale in everything you do from manufacturing to design to customer care. Uh, and they're very emergent. I, I made the case uh, uh, earlier this week that you can't do, deal with all this tech change yourself and you don't have to. You can enable the network to help you in doing that. So we see that, that uh, new modes of dealing with technology are, are emerging. Uh, Gartner has been talking about bimodal IT, two-speed IT. The industry is saying it's probably multi-speed. We need to have our old ways of doing it for important systems like payroll and accounting, and we have to move 10 times faster, 20 times faster on the edges as we innovate. And that requires uh, a system that, have, that accounts for the kinds of security and the governance that we need to have for certain types of things, but we can unleash elsewhere. So that's becoming very popular as well. We also see that uh, the traditional model of technology enablement, the central IT department can't do all of this. How can we enlist more people in the organization? Things like hackathons are allowing uh, organizations to tap into and create on-demand events that spur innovation, a large pool of innovation from which a few successes can be pulled. So what's coming next? I'm gonna flip through this. We don't have time to go through it all. These will be posted on SlideShare, but I wanted to give you a sense of some of these changes in particular. We have two types. We have digital change, and we have social business style change, how technology is uh, altering how we work and how we manage uh, and how we deliver value to our customers. So we see that uh, wearables, uh, I used to be somewhat skeptical that they would be big in the enterprise, and then I began to see great examples like the Hitachi Business Microscope. Uh, which is uh, which used, it's a name badge with face recognition, and when you merge two organizations, you can see who's collaborating, who's communicating, and you can see who's not, 
and then you can fix it. It's a great story. Um, the Apple Watch, uh, healthcare wearables, all those are going to change things significantly. Um, and we have some steps here on how to prioritize them. Digital assistants, Watson, Siri, Cortana, now Amazon Echo are showing what is possible in terms of uh, being able to just request our IT systems do what we need and they figure out the details, they figure out the best way of doing things. They have access to your data uh, by permission and your applications. Frictionless user experience is really what this is about. Agent-based computing. Um, mind machine interfaces, they're in the lab, they're actually on the way to market. You will have to, you will be seeing those in your workplace in five years. Uh, no longer will you have to uh, respond to that email by trying to peck on your Apple Watch. You'll be able to reply to that. These are actually at advanced state stages of development right now. Uh, and the gateway to those is, of course, augmented and virtual reality. That's, the, the, that's what we're, we're, we've seen so much here at the show. Um, if you haven't used Oculus Rift, I urge you to try it. It's revolutionary. The apps in the App Store for Oculus Rift, there's, there are hundreds of them for collaboration, uh, for training, for learning, for all sorts of things. And they take advantage of the full bandwidth of the human brain to process information. It's incredible. Google Cardboard, that's a $4 conversion, four, three and a half euro conversion kit. They'll take your smartphone and turn it into an instant virtual reality device. It's high, actually pretty high quality. Low code. I've been talking about this for, if you've been uh, following my writing for, for 15 years, that it's going to be easy for the average person to create applications. I even noticed that there's Zoho Creator right there. Build custom apps for any business need with no coding. I've seen this all throughout the show. I've been writing about it. There's QuickBase, Zapier, If This, Then That, Hooks. All of these services that all of you can use today in a, in a few minutes to automate and build applications that will make your business and your life easier. Uh, simple applications no longer require any programming. Simple, useful applications. I use them. I use these apps all the time. Um, and we're seeing, you know, a health ministry uh, throughout its patient administration system that, that it took three years to code and it wasn't working and they did it in four months, one week with low code. This is, this is Forrester case studies. There's many others like it. Low code is here and it works now. That's going to change everything. The blockchain, I talked about that already. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bring transparency and openness and trust to so many things that we do in terms of digital relationships and digital transactions. I would definitely investigate it. How are we going to learn all this stuff? I've been, te I've been talking about so many things already. Future skilling, it's just in time preparing our workforce to have these new skills. We're very compressed training programs that anticipate what's going to happen the next. You take this list and, and you prepare your workforce to start you applying these technologies and these tools to their, to their lives. Uh, work hacking, this is growth hacking for business. This is a thing now, there's books about it. There's dashboards and business intelligence tools that allow you to say, all right, so we, this is good, and if we, how can we make it better faster? And we have a, a real-time feedback loop. Um, empowering you, you workers to fix what's broken. Instead of, you say, look, here's, here's the work hacking strategies, fix that broken process, make it better, the one that you hate so much. Digital management models. Uh, these are happening, this is happening in Germany. Uh, Bosch, some of the Bosch folks are here. That's a, a highly respected global organization. They're using social business to run the entire company. Their top 25 institutional practices have been redesigned for social platforms, highly collaborative and self-organized. Uh, community managers which support it have a pay grade as high as the sea level. Um, this is one of many, many examples. Uh, hundreds of companies in the United States are using uh, a management model, a digital management model called Holacracy that uses an app called Glass Frog to actually uh, allow you to co-manage the entire organization. There are no middle managers in these organizations and only a few, self, a few leaders that have been selected um, by the workers. Very interesting. Um, so these digital tools that enable new ways of working now are having the management theories behind them developing. So Holacracy is just one. Uh, the responsive.org, um, uh, Wirearchy, social business, or other competing ones. Holacracy is the most complete right now, though. Uh, all of this is, is becoming much more operationalized. Business intelligence uh, can be applied to all of this open collaboration that we've been talking about the last few days. We can now have 
and see what the organization is doing, what it's thinking, what it knows, and we can make decisions better and faster. We talked about Bosch, um, this, this holistic process of rethinking our organization. Um, uh, I've been very excited. You can go on the slide share and see all this, the stories of what they're doing. Um, but uh, they're right now leading the best practices. I, I see we actually have some of the people here from Bosch in the organization. Um, they're reporting dramatically better operational improvements in what they're doing. Social HR. More and more large companies that I talk with use social channels primarily for recruiting. I know one very large 100,000 person company that uses LinkedIn and social profiles as its primary recruiting method because it's the best. You find people already employed, the, the leaders in their industry, all their resumes are out there to, to harness and, and to collaborate with. Um, same thing with the sales process. Swarm intelligence. Uh, your supply chain is one of the most important things in your business, yet when something breaks, very few people see it. So one of the great things about social tools we've learned, Deloitte has discovered in a case study after case study, when the supply chain breaks down, um, you can get people to swarm all over it. Raise the, the exception in the supply chain up and let, let the company provide uh, the best just-in-time solutions to fix that. Social performance management, wouldn't it be great? In the United States, we stop our companies almost completely twice a year to remember, try and remember everything we did and rate everybody. Wouldn't it be great because we're already reporting everything in these social channels, everything's visible, that, that has happened continuously in real time. This is a thing. Talent analytics is a big deal. SAP, in fact, is one of the leaders uh, here at the show talking about talent analytics saying, we can now see how, whatever, how what everyone's doing all the time, we can manage to it. I know you have your workers' council, uh, but it's been changing to accommodate many of these things. Uh, it, and, and so it's beginning to happen. Uh, machine learning uh, and AI-based social analytics. This is something that's near and dear to Bjorn's heart, um, but we're gonna be able to apply artificial intelligence on top of all of this collaboration to assist, make decisions faster than our competition using everything that we know, right? It's kind of taking the Amazon Echo. I can ask any question and the artificial intelligence can look at everything, the total output of the organization. That's something, that's, that is actually something I just got a demonstration of from IBM. They're turning it into a major product line. Uh, we, ha we need a great social integration between all these apps. We're getting collaboration in everything, and that's one thing where this is not working out so well. We have too many tools. This is the collaboration paradox. The more tools we have for collaboration, the more isolated we seem. Uh, we're starting, however, to see some solutions for that. Things like Slack, things like App Fusions are actually showing some initial success. These are all the different app collaboration apps for every vertical, every type of collaboration, There's, and we have too many of them. So what does it look like when you get all this done? You're gonna create this, you're gonna create an ecosystem that, that you do not have to create all yourself. You're gonna create the points of extension through open APIs, through your communities, through your other touch points on that digital network, and your stakeholders who love your products and services will help build on top of that. We've actually heard story after story about how marketing, how operations, how customer care is much better done with the network. Uh, you know, leading organizations like Citibank and Facebook use hackathons to say, we can't innovate everything, let's gather everything, everybody we know and all of our great, our great platform and let's build on top of it. We're underutilizing our very valuable assets. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna build this much better, more integrated stakeholder journey. Most of us still have to build it, uh, but it's gonna have all these components to create more value, to give us more time back in our lives, hopefully, right? To enrich them, uh, to stay competitive, and to do it sustainably. And the challenge is gonna be doing that sustainably. And I began to notice organizations a few years ago being able to drive change much faster than others. Uh, organizations like FCC, the Federal Communication Commission, in the United States, very bureaucratic, old school, a government agency said, we can't fix all of our broken IT. So we're gonna say, anybody who wants to volunteer in the organization have to have some knowledge. We're gonna put you in charge of that, give you the resources and teach you how to do it. And in one year, they upgraded 300 applications and moved them all to the cloud. Something that they said, they did it the old way, it would have taken them 10 years and they would have failed, right? So we're seeing these change agents programs. Look at that hashtag on Twitter. There's a lot of conversation about decentralizing technology enablement. That's how we're gonna do all these things. Um, and we're gonna create these successful and sustainable next generation enterprises. 
So that's it. I hope we brought it in under time. But, um, and I know that was a lot to absorb, um, but well, I'll post this on the, the, the CBIT um, hashtag uh, here after the session. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. It was a great presentation. Uh, I know that you have to catch the bullet train to Frankfurt to yes. go back to home. So just a short question afterwards. Yeah, was it, you talked a lot about uh, advanced technology and you mentioned several times the confusion that appears, especially when companies are the first time confronted with these kind of technologies. Europe, in particular Germany, has a strong manufacturing sector. Uh, and the backbone are small, medium-sized companies focusing on engineering perfect products. What would be the perfect starting point for these companies to enter the digital world? So uh, one thing I, I slide I didn't include here because I, I assumed you all knew about it was the Internet of Things. <laughs> and that's where every non-trivial object in our uh, personal and our business lives is going to become connected and throw off data 24 hours a day. We'll be able to monitor and manage it, get value from it, uh, give value to it, um, and that's something that I think is relatively easy. We're seeing low power Bluetooth chips that have 10 year batteries that use that, that low power Bluetooth. Those now can be manufactured in bulk. Most of these small and medium sized companies can make their make smart products out of what they're already making, I think. Do you think a company which is focused on working with steel uh, should enter that way to the digital world? Ah, so, uh, <laughs> so let's see, making uh, uh, and raw products, I mean, I, uh, uh, raw manufacturing, I think your, your operational capabilities, everything you do, how you do that in the back office, how you do uh, even the machines that you use to make that can all be much more uh, wired and instrumented. Will your products themselves be as changed as much? I don't know, that's an open question. I think most companies have to go up the stack though. They have to, they have to go uh, either into information or into data or into other things. And so I would hope that they would, they would evolve even on the manufacturing side as well. I hope so, and then we wish our companies good luck, yeah? And yes. catch your train, thank you very much, yeah? Yes, thank you very much.